in uh, Hello Everyone. Uh, as you've just heard, maternal medicine is an exciting new market for the USCOM 1A. And the USCOM 1A truly is at the forefront of non-invasive maternal hemodynamics. And as Rob said, uh, it is, it's reducing risks in pregnancy. I'd like to give you a little background on the history of hemodynamics in the maternal hemodynamic market. It's been developing out of Europe since 2009 primarily out of the United Kingdom. And since this time, USCOM has been working closely with key opinion leaders, Professor Herbert Valencise from Rome and Dr. Asma Khalil from London. It's been very much physician-led and it is truly a dynamic field. Uh, there, is, there really is great excitement uh, from these physicians for what maternal hemodynamics is doing to better inform maternal medicine physicians. Historically, pregnancy hypertension has been managed or perhaps badly managed by relying on treating blood pressure. New non-invasive methods such as the uscom one a are able to measure the components of blood pressure, that is the cardiac output and the systemic vascular resistance. This information identifies whether the systemic vascular resistance or the cardiac output is too high or if indeed both measures are too high. Having this information enables the physician to treat the correct cause of the hypertension. So this presentation will discuss how maternal hemodynamics is changing the management of hypertension in pregnancy and preeclampsia. So what do we know about preeclampsia? Well, preeclampsia is pathologically high blood pressure occurring during a pregnancy and which often but not always includes protein in the urine. Early onset preeclampsia is defined as preeclampsia that develops before 34 weeks, whereas late onset preeclampsia develops at or after 34 weeks of gestation. You may also hear the terms pregnancy-induced hypertension or gestational hypertension. These represent new onset hypertension in pregnancy and importantly are currently not diagnosed until after 20 weeks. Hypertensive pregnancy disorders is an umbrella term and it includes pregnancy-induced hypertension, gestational hypertension and preeclampsia. The predominant burden of hypertension pregnancy disorders is in the late onset cases, later than 34 weeks. And this has the largest number of patients that turn, uh, that, that turn up at the hospital at risk. So what about risk? <clears throat> Preeclampsia occurs in one in 20 pregnancies and risks include increased morbidity, maternal death and premature births. In dollar terms, premature births and maternal morbidity is extremely costly to the hospital and in the US alone, it costs more than $2.18 billion in the first 12 months after delivery. Early detection is important and would improve these maternal and neonatal risks and costs. Auspiciously, changes in maternal hemodynamics that may progress to become hypertension are detectable from as early as five weeks gestation. Screening maternal hemodynamics for early changes of preeclampsia allows for earlier, more appropriate interventions and improved maternal fetal outcomes. Accurate measurement of maternal hemodynamics during the first trimester of pregnancy, and this is despite the presence of normal blood pressure, can detect a decreased stroke volume, cardiac output and inotropy index, and an increased systemic vascular resistance, which are all associated with negative outcomes, such as an early delivery, decreased fetal birth weight and increased admission to NICU, 
increased incidence of caesarean section and increased incidence of preeclampsia. Importantly, these abnormalities are detected prior to the onset of abnormal BP, which is the current method of identifying maternal circulatory maladaptation. Screening for such changes may allow more appropriate and earlier interventions and improve outcomes. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the maternal hemodynamics during a normal pregnancy. So a normal pregnancy is associated with a greater demand on the mother's heart and arteries compared to the normal, uh, the non-pregnant state. It's an extreme exercise test for the cardiovascular system, actually more than an Olympic athlete has to go through. The maternal cardiovascular system needs to adapt through changes in cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. In normal pregnancy, cardiac output and stroke volume significantly increase during gestation, whilst systemic vascular resistance significantly decreases, as you can see on that graph at the beginning of the first half of pregnancy, and then it starts to rise in that latter part of the pregnancy. This baby was born in the late February, where the arrow is. And this graph uh, of the normal adaptation shows how the resistance decreases to permit an increase in cardiac output. The last reading is postpartum and shows that the systemic vascular resistance has returned to uh, pre-pregnancy values. Abnormalities of these adaptive mechanisms are connected with hypertensive disorders. As seen on the image on the right, an SVR which does not decrease normally during gestation may indicate preeclampsia. In mothers that develop pregnancy-related cardiovascular disease, the function of the heart and arteries is abnormal and causes undue stress on the mother and baby. And progression of preeclampsia is a recommended common indicator for preterm delivery. You can see on our graph that this baby was delivered earlier than the patient with the normal systemic vascular resistance. So let's talk about the cost of preeclampsia. The finding of an analysis by the World Health Organization of causes of maternal death found that preeclampsia is a leading cause of maternal mortality with an unbelievable 76,000 maternal deaths annually. And as stated in our opening slide, in the US alone, complications of preeclampsia, such as eclampsia, organ damage, pulmonary edema, stroke, thromboembolism, and the HELP syndrome are extremely costly to patients, hospitals, and the economy with a price tag of $2.18 billion. In the ASCOM 1A, we now have the technology to make a difference. So what's the evidence saying? In the publication, Correlation Between Maternal Body Composition and Hemodynamic Changes in Pregnancy, looking at different profiles for different hypertensive disorders, Professor Valencese concluded that if systemic vascular resistance does not reduce during gestation, there is possibility of increased risk of preeclampsia. Last year, Asma Khalil stated that ASCOM1A's systemic vascular resistance index is an independent predictor for hypertension and as good as the SFLIT PIGF ratio in detecting hypertensive diseases in pregnancy in the late onset preeclampsia. Uh, S, the SFLIT PIGF ratio is a blood test used to rule out short-term preeclampsia. Uh, it costs the US, uh, costs 40 to 100 US dollars per year. Now currently, uh, per test, currently there's no FDA uh, for that test. It's available um, in Europe. Identification of hemodynamic Doppler patterns in pregnant women with preeclampsic history 
Uh, this is a paper from Mexico, tells us that ASCOM1A accurately and non-invasively monitors stroke volume, cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance and simplifies guidance of therapy for hypertension and preeclampsia. So ASCOM1A is the maternal hemodynamic solution. So in summary, ASCOM1A identifies patients at risk of developing preeclampsia earlier, from as early as five weeks. ASCOM1A identifies the appropriate antihypertensive therapy by measuring the SVR and cardiac output. ASCOM1A monitors the effectiveness of personalized antihypertensive therapy by trending change over the weeks and months of the pregnancy. And ASCOM1A improves and simplifies hemodynamic monitoring during pregnancy. It has the benefits of being non-invasive, accurate, portable, and easy to learn and use. So in conclusion, hypertension and preeclampsia are hemodynamic issues. The ASCOM1A allows our customers to better understand the hemodynamics and we are changing practice in maternal medicine. And best of all, we're reducing risks in pregnancy. So it's a very exciting new market for all of us. Thank you.